Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and today I'm going to give you just a brief lesson on the scientific method. Now, the scientific method is a way of learning that emphasizes observation and experimentation to explain the world around us. Now, this method really came into vogue in around the 17th century. So prior to this point, scientists were still trying to explain things, but the difference is, is they weren't backing up their explanations with experiments. So in a sense, the method really goes back to the laws of logic and men like Aristotle, because it is a logical proof of trying to explain something and then back it up with observation and experiments. So there are a series of steps then that come with the scientific method. The first step is just to ask a question. So maybe you want to know, okay, why is the sky blue? Or you want to ask yourself, how do birds fly? Or why do leaves change color? Or how do atoms stick together? Okay, so whatever your question is that you want to study. Okay, well once you have your question, then you have to put forth a tentative explanation which is known as a hypothesis. So again, a hypothesis is just a tentative explanation. So once you have your explanation, well now is when you have to back it up and you have to try to prove whether it's true or false. And you do that through experiments. Again, experiments are the difference in the scientific method and the way that scientists used to try to explain things. So once you've done your experiments, then you analyze your results and collect all your data, and then you formulate some kind of a conclusion. Okay, so once you get to this point, you can figure out if, you're, if it's true or false, your explanation. If it's false, well, then you go back and you revise it, and you have a revised hypothesis. And then you test that one, and you analyze uh, those results, and you formulate a new conclusion. And you keep going back, and you keep revising it over and over and over until you finally get a hypothesis that holds up to scrutiny. And then once you get to that point, and you've proven it as best you know how, then you can share your hypothesis with your colleagues and your peers, and they can test it. So at that point, then, then a hypothesis that has been very well tested and established, then it becomes a theory. So I'm sure you've heard of many theories, you know, uh, the Big Bang Theory, the Theory of Relativity, the Theory of Re Evolution. So these are still just explanations, but they are explanations that have been well established. Now, again, a theory, though, still at its heart is an explanation, and that makes it different from a scientific law. So a theory can never become a law. Okay, so there's a common misconception that says eventually after enough time a theory will become a law, but that's not true. Because while a theory is an explanation of why something happens, a law is just simply a statement of what's happening. So for example, the law of gravity. The law of gravity does not try to explain how gravity occurs. All it does is it just states that gravity happens. It's not trying to explain it. So I'll leave you with one final quote by our buddy Einstein, who says that no amount of experimentation could ever prove me right. A single experiment can prove me wrong. And I love this quote because it's so true about the nature of science. Even Einstein, as brilliant of a scientist as he was, a single experiment could be done today, tomorrow, or a year from now, maybe even by you, that would completely invalidate his theory, and then it would be back to the drawing board, having to revise the hypothesis and test it all over again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this brief lesson. Be sure and click on the subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new videos are posted. And we'll see you next time here at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.